Once upon a time, there was something called the Walkman, or generically, the personal stereo. In an age before MP3s and iPods, people listened to cassettes. Um, these days, ancient personal stereos can be found in the trash, in thrift shops, in your attic. Inside is something called a tape head. This is the business end of a tape recorder. This is the device that imprints audio onto the tape by causing a fluctuating magnetic field that jostles magnetic domains on the tape backing. And then it's also what's used to play back the tape. Uh, once again, this is one of these reversible electromagnetic processes. Um, if you were to take a tape head out of a piece of gear, you would see that it has stripes on it of a sort on the shiny front corresponding to the tracks on the tape. This has two, I suspect it is from a stereo tape recorder. And then on the back there are pins associated with, two of them associated with each one of those stripy gaps here. One of these picks up one track, one of these the other. Or one would hope. So let's test it. I'm going to take a plug with some alligator clips on it, plug it into our little amp. We're going to clip one lead onto one pin, one lead onto the other. Try very hard not to short out against the metal case. I'm going to turn on the amp. Then we're going to take a transit card. Because you see, even though people aren't using cassette tape much these days for music, Magnetic stripes are still in use on transit cards. British Airways executive. Frequent flyer cards. Uh, parking lot. And, right, Chicago. The Chicago Transit Authority has the loudest data card in the world. Um, you will hear in the background hum, crackle. These things are basically coils with a hard hat on them, and they will pick up hum anywhere they can find it. You can start with a tape playing device that actually functions. Um, it plays tape, but it doesn't have high sentimental or monetary value. And you can disconnect the tape head in such a way that you can continue to play and record but with a freely moving tape head against static material rather than the tape moving past the stationary tape head. So we have to start by opening it. And removing the electronics from the case and also getting access to the head that is in the well. Here you can see the tape head mounted in the mechanism of the transport. And you'll see that the block of metal on which the head is mounted is held in with two small screws at either end here. So we're going to unscrew those in an attempt to get the head off so that we can hold it. There we go. So, on the edge, one edge of the tape head, there are two prongs sticking up, um, like a simplistic fork. And these you have to bend back. They're used to align the cassette tape coming through, but they make it impossible to press the head flush against some other piece of material. If you press the play on the deck, 
and everything is still functional, little gears will whirl, and you can now take the head and rub something against it, and hear the sound out of the built-in speakers of the device. So now you have a self-sufficient playback device for hand scratching. Now, transit cards all sound the same, more or less, but if you take a cassette tape that you've recorded something on, place it along the table and rub the head across it, you can do essentially the tape equivalent of turntable uh, cutting and scratching. Um, even a rather cheap boombox such as this has a much better designed preamp for the tape head than just sticking it into the front end of a mixer or a little amp. So um, you can actually get a reasonably good sound out of it. And most importantly, if you haven't completely destroyed the device by opening it up like this, you can record this way as well. So you can put tape down on a table and uh, plug something into this to record or speak into the built-in mic, move the head across the tape or sideways or backwards and essentially make a semi-linear back and forth method of recording. 